Everybody knows Alaska. All the way to the 19th century, the Russian Empire had control over Alaska. It is true that this place is very cold and it's extremely far away from St. Petersburg, the Russian Empire capital. But this land is very rich in natural resources and it was very important for the Russian government back then. But in the year 1867, news went around that shocked the entire world. The news was basically that Russia had sold this giant piece of land to a new country that wasn't even 100 years old, the United States that was 90 years old back then. This real estate deal was probably the worst deal in history. Alaska is so naturally rich that we don't know what the Russian Empire leaders were thinking and why they sold this valuable piece of land for only $7,200,000. This land is very rich in fish, endless supply of minerals, forests that provide a lot of lumber, gold mine, and most importantly, natural gas and oil. Before we move forward, let's look at the history of Russia. Russia started conquering the surrounding lands in the 16th century, and all they were trying to do is add more and more land to their empire. In the year 1581, Russia has control in the entire area of Siberia, and they have reached the Alaska Bridge. This is the Alaska Bridge, which currently is the border between Russia and the US. Thousands of years ago, these two pieces of land were connected, but not anymore. When the Russians reach the bridge of Alaska, meaning right here, they decide to stay there and not move forward anymore. After a few centuries, when the Russian Empire has more control throughout the entire land they had conquered, and then finally, they decide to enter Alaska. And in the year 1741, the Russians enter and basically claim ownership of this much land. When they enter Alaska, they get very surprised. They see in this piece of land, there is a lot of furry animals, furry foxes, bears, sea otters with a lot of fur, and a lot of other animals because of the evolution of the cold weather had a lot of fur. This news reaches St. Petersburg, the capital of the Russian Empire. When they realize that Alaska has a lot of fur, they get excited and they send hunters to kill these animals and bring these valuable furs back for coats. But Alaska had another issue for Russia. It was extremely far away from the center of Russia. When we say center, we're talking about the west side because back then, and still to this day, most of the population lives on the west side of the country. If you draw a line over the Caspian Sea and move east, the population density is extremely low and there's a lot of empty land. That is why Russia was never able to send a huge population to Alaska. And at that time, only seven to 800 Russians were there and they were all employees of the government and they were taking care of something. At the time of Alexander II, one of the Tsars, he realized that, that not only Alaska is losing money for them, it's not bringing in any more profits, but he forgot he killed a lot of animals in Alaska and brought the fur back to Russia. Eventually, on March 30th, 1867, Alexander II makes one of the worst decisions in the world and sells this giant piece of land to the United States. You have to know that Alaska is 1,723,000 kilometers squared, and that's a little bit bigger than the country of Iran. Iran is 1,648,000 kilometers squared. The $7.2 million that the US paid Russia, if you want to calculate it in today's dollar, it's about $113 million. If you want to buy a penthouse in New York City, you're gonna have to pay this much. But the US government with this much money got 150 million hectares of land. I don't know what Alexander II was thinking. It's good to know that when the Russian October Revolution 
was successful, one of the things Lenin would say was this. The land of Baku, which is in the north of Iran, that was taken by the Russian Empire, was so important and it was one of the most valuable pieces of land for the USSR. And the reason was oil. And the USSR will not survive without the Baku oil. But on the other hand, they could have much more oil if they kept Alaska. So in Russian history, Alexander II is not known as a good leader. When the Americans bought land, they already had plans on what they wanted to do with it. Because they had gotten to know it very well before they bought it. They sent people there to work and live there and they all got a job. And their main goal was the natural resources of this piece of land. Historians give an excuse to the Russian emperor back then. You have to know that in Asia, Britain was taking over the entire area. They took over India and they were planning on taking over Iran and the Ottoman Empire. But the Russians didn't want to be held back from this situation. That is why they were spending a lot of money to stop England from expanding. And because of the battles back and forth with England, they were wasting a lot of money. Alexander II and his consultant realized, let's sell that piece of land that's far away for us and it doesn't have a lot of value so we can reach the Persian Gulf. But the $7.2 million was nothing and it didn't do anything for them. Not only did Russia have problems with Britain in the Middle East, but from the European side, they had a lot of problems with France. The same era we're talking about the Russian economy had collapsed and people are starving to death. And they were defeated in front of France and Britain at the same time. They also had lost Alaska. So it was complete depression. The Americans were very good at buying pieces of land. 60 years before Alaska, they bought this piece of land that has about 15 states in there for a small price of $15 million. After they bought Louisiana from France, the people in the US government always said, we have to reach the Pacific Ocean. But at that time, the entire West Coast was in Spanish hands. The US government would always message the Spanish and tell them to sell this piece of land so we have access to the Pacific Ocean. But the Spanish would always decline the offer and say it's not for sale. But eventually, in the year 1836, the Americans were getting tired of arguing with the Spanish. And that is why, in true British fashion, the Americans attack the Spanish to take over the land. The Spanish-American War begins, and they fight for a very long time. All this piece of land, which the Spanish called Mexico, was added to the US land. And at the bottom, it stayed as Mexico. But these two pieces of land didn't belong to any of them. And the Native Americans were just shocked looking at these two powerful empires. It's good to note that when they were trying to pay the 7.2 million to the Russians, there were a lot of people in the government that were declining this and telling them it's a mistake to buy a piece of land that far away. But most of the people in the government were smart and didn't back out of this amazing deal. And year after year, it showed that this was one of the best piece of land the Americans had ever bought. And it's considered one of the richest states in the country. Just like we said earlier, from Alaska, the Russians and the Americans have a border. The water between this area is their border, and it's about 80 kilometers. Alaska has its own history as well. Before the Russians took over, Alaska had natives and they had been living there for thousands of years. And the funny part is the Americans and Russians are making deals and they're not telling the natives what the hell is happening. When the Americans took over Alaska, they told the 50,000 natives that lived in Alaska that the main language in this area is now English and everybody that lives in this area has to learn the language but they weren't considered US citizens until 60 years later. Eventually, in the year 1924, the Alaskan residents were finally recognized as US citizens, but a special kind of Alaskan citizen. You can't enter continental USA, you can't vote, and you can't even buy land in mainland USA. And then eventually, in 1945, it was getting obvious that how brutal this law is. They counted the natives as Americans, 
and they gave him the same rights. In the year 1971, when Richard Nixon was the president of the US, they gave 18 million hectares to the natives that lived in Alaska. But the natives were not happy about this decision whatsoever, and they would tell the government that you shouldn't even have taken our land in the first place. You have to know that in the culture of Native Americans all over from north to south, they didn't believe in buying land and owning land. That's why they didn't know when the white people would buy the land, what it really meant. Let me tell you a story that makes Native American culture make sense. In the year 1626, when the Dutch finally reached New York, one of these Dutchmen by the name of Peter Schagen buys Manhattan from one of the natives in that area and he buys it for $24. And if you count it in today's money, that's about $1143. The funny part is that the native that sold this piece of land starts to joke with Peter Schagen and tells him, you bought the land, come and buy the sky too. And he starts laughing with the other Native Americans because they didn't know when someone buys a land what it means. With this $24, the Dutch took over this land and it was named New Amsterdam. But later on, when the English took over, the name was changed to New York because there's a York in England. 